Hello, Year 7. Now that we're getting better with our oblique communication, our 3D drawing styles, we're going to start adding the next level of complexity to it, which is tone and shading. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the basics of drawing in oblique again, just to recap what we're doing. And then we're going to add some tone and shading to it. So let's start with a basic oblique shape. We're going to do a basic cube. And I'm going to do mine on freehand paper, but if you want to use grid paper, please feel free. Whatever you've got available, whatever you can do. As you can see, I've got a nice sharp pencil. If I hold it up to the camera, nice and sharp. That's We're going to need that today. And I've got my ruler. So I'm going to start by drawing a simple oblique shape. I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, 50 mil high. I'm going to do 50 mil along as well. And I'm measuring it with my rule. We're in nice and neat. And taking my time with it. Get it as accurate as I can. You can do whatever size you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Wait until the end of the video to see what I've done and then give it a go. So. I've got my basic rectangle there. I'm now going to do my 45 degree oblique lines. Now, this is going to go off a 45 degree angle. It hasn't got to be perfect, but as close as you can get it. And here's a little thing that you won't have been taught yet. For the depth, if I'm doing a perfect cube, I want it to look like it's the same depth as it is height and width. But the trick with oblique to make it look accurate is to actually do half the measurement. So instead of doing 50 mil, I'm gonna do 250, uh, 25 mil. So half that same length, I'll do that there. And you'll see that it will look just right. It's not perfect, but it's the best way of approximating it. And now when I join these up, a little bit over there, so it's okay. We all make mistakes, it's fine. And there we go, I've got my oblique cube. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. There we go. Now, we're gonna add some tone and shading to this. When we do tone and shading, we do three tones. We do a light, a medium, and a dark. And these represent how much light is being seen. So I'm going to, I'm going to move my camera back a little bit for you. I'm going to assume that the light is coming from up here, from the back, more towards the top. And this is going to mean that most of my light is going to hit this side here. That's going to be my lightest side. A little L there. Light will hit this side, but not as much as the top side. So that's going to be more of a medium. But a lot less light is going to get to this side. This will be my dark. And this is going to be how the tones are applied. When we're doing light, we want to just do a single pass of shading with our pencil, like that. When we do a medium, we want to do the same thing again, but don't fall into the trap of thinking you've got to press harder. Now we just do a second layer or a third layer, just so it looks distinctly different. And you can see there, it's a lot darker. And then with the dark one, exactly the same principle again, we just add more layers. What we're looking for here is three clearly distinct tones. So you need to take your time with this. And this is not one of them, I'm gonna rush it jobs. This is a time taking, and it looks best when you've clearly taken your time. So you can see there, I've got my light, my medium, my dark. My light is just one pass. My medium, I generally do about three passes. And my dark, I generally go between six and eight passes, really to make them distinctly different. And I'm gonna show you another little trick that's gonna help you. So on my light one, I'm gonna go in one direction. I'm gonna start off by doing my outsides and I'll just very gently go around the outside. Just to touch up. Because I can't move my paper because of the camera, I'm gonna move my arm around here. But what I'd recommend for you is you just turn the paper around so it's, this line is going in the same orientation as you'd be comfortable with. Okay. So there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. And it's more of a, a life hack, but it's, a, it's an easy method. I don't wanna go over that line there. That's really important for me. I don't wanna go over that because it's gonna ruin the rest of my work. 
So instead, I'm gonna place my rule up against it. And now when I go against it, it's gonna stop. So another way of staying within the lines, making life easier for yourself. Before we get going though, I'm gonna talk about how we hold the pencil. Remember that the pencil is a useful tool. And it's, you know, the pencil has done nothing to offend or hurt you. It's not a stabbing implement, all right? We're not gonna try and wave it around. We're gonna hold this gently and accurately. I balance mine amongst these three fingers here, all right, in between there, and then balance the other end back here. You want as much of this as far away from your hand as possible if you can, so it enables you to be gentle with it. You don't want to press down hard. The paper's not done anything to offend you, the pencil's not done anything to offend you, so don't try and damage them. Let's be gentle with it. Again, a nice sharp pencil will make this a lot easier. So I'm gonna hold my rule here, and I'm just going to gently shade going in one set of directions, backwards and forwards, across here. And I'm very, very gently pressing I'm not putting any pressure on this at all. It's only the weight of the pencil that's applying the pressure. Now, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna carefully touch up this piece here. What we're looking for on the light is no white gaps. We wanna get rid of those white gaps. You want to consistently apply tone. Now I've got some white gaps up here. Getting in very, very gently like this is actually really quite difficult. So this is where you can very, very gently just go along in another direction just to tidy it up. Okay. And this is where I could have also put my rule up here and gone that way. And that might have made it a bit easier for me. So you can see most of the white is gone and it's one consistent tone. I'm now going to do my medium, and I'm going to go this direction for my medium, so I'll start off by doing my outside boundary again. I'll do a couple of layers on the outside boundary. And this, the, when you do this outside boundary, set it the tone you want it to be. So it gives you almost like a guideline for that's what I'm aiming for. And is it distinctly different from the previous one? One thing I'll always recommend is work from light to dark because you can always add more layers on. You can't take the layers off. So that's looking a little bit better. So now I'm going to use my rule here and I'm just gonna add some more layers. And I'm just gonna build up the first layer. And as I build it up, I'm just, I'm not worrying about taking, you know, taking forever. I'm just building it up and I'm gonna add a second layer. And you can see as it's going, it's getting darker. I can visibly see it getting darker. I'm going to add a third layer now. I'm not pushing any harder than I was originally. Same amount of pressure, same amount of force. And you can see that that is clearly darker than that one. I'm just going to fill in those little white gaps there. It's really important that on your medium and dark layers there are no white gaps. Now I might go as far as to say, actually I might want a final layer on there just to really make it clear that it's different from that first side. So here we go. That nice little bit of extra depth there, and that is my medium layer done. And now I'm into the dark one, and I've made myself more work. I've made more work for myself by having the largest one, the darkest one, which means I've got the most amount of work to do on this one. So I'm going to go over this outside edges a few times first, really get the depth down there, being careful to press gently with my pencil. I'm having to position myself quite awkwardly here. I'd always recommend for you to rotate your page round so that your hand is comfortable. Don't contort your arm or your hand into a really uncomfortable position because that will affect your work. When you've got a bit more practice and a bit more skill applying these, these skills here, then you can start working in weird angles. But for now, make life as easy for yourself as you can by just moving the paper around. So, I'm gonna work from top to bottom, and I'm probably gonna do this in two halves. I'll do the bottom half, then I'll do the top half. And that also allow me to use my rule for both sides. So here's the bottom half here, and I just keep adding my layers in. And this can take a little bit of time. There's no like, instantly it's done solution here. This just takes time, so keep working with it. And keep working with it. And I just keep adding my layers in, and as I la add my layers in, it just gets a little bit darker every time 
I'm going to keep doing it, not for a certain number of layers, but until I look, look at it and think that looks distinctly different. And I am aware that what I can see in person and what you can see on the camera is different, so I'm looking at what I can see on the camera as well. I'm going to wait until it looks nice and clearly different for me before I even think about moving on. Because it has to look different to my first two sides. It's obviously different to the first one, but it's not different enough yet to the second one. So I'm going to keep adding my layers. Remember, do not fall into the trap of pressing harder. You don't want to press hard on this at all. If you press hard, you're going to get nasty dark patches. You're going to get horrible greasy lines on it. It's not going to look very nice. So it's starting to get dark enough now. I'm going to keep adding a few more layers though. Really build that depth up there. Make sure all the white is gone. A nice dark side on there. And then I can do the other half of the side. And that's looking quite good. And I think on the camera you can clearly see the distinct difference there. I'm just going to move my rule up here and I'm going to do the second half. And what you might not be able to see, I'll hold it up to the camera, see if you can see it. Will it focus in time? You can see that the tip of my pencil is almost turned into a chisel where it's been worn away. That means you're doing it properly. If your pencil's snapping, you're pressing too hard or you might have a faulty pencil but make sure your pencil stays sharp. If your pencil starts going blunt halfway through, stop and resharpen it, and then go back and start very, very gently. If that happens, you need to be very gentle so you can match up your tone and your shading. And what I've got to do here now is only do the bits I haven't done, and keep going until the tone matches the other bits. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I'm gonna keep going with it. My pencil is bouncing off the rule here. That's fine, that's not gonna cause any problems. That's gonna stop me going over the edges. And it's getting very, very close to being finished, but it's not quite there yet. But this is how you apply three-tone rendering, or three-tone shading. We're not gradiating it, there's no gradient in it. You can do that in art. Here, it's about technical communication. Where is the light? Where's the light coming from? Now you can see that there's a seam running along here and that's where the pencil is crossed over a little bit. That's fine, that happens. If that's on yours, I'm not gonna mark you down for it. But that's what I'm looking for. A light, medium, and a dark. I would like to have a go at this with a range of different shapes. Uh, you might want to use some of the shapes I've set you before. I'll make sure that there's some shapes in the assignment for you to use. Have a good go at this and take your time. A lot of people find this quite relaxing. I can find it quite relaxing and therapeutic, although I don't understand why people will find this frustrating. This is a technical communication skill, and it's a valuable skill to have when you're communicating detail in a design. Take your time, work slowly, sharp pencil, and a ruler. Good luck, guys.